Please pray with me. Make me pure, Lord, thou art holy. Make me meek, Lord, thou art lowly. Now beginning and always, now begin on Christmas Day. Amen. Please be seated. Merry Christmas. It's a joy to be with you, wherever you may be, on this most holy day, this deep and timeless day, one that somehow makes all things fresh and new. It is a birthday, after all. That's the kind of day when the wonder of life, its celebrated beginning, but also its mystical passage, the marvel of existence itself shines out of everything. And how much more so does that reality glisten on this, the birthday of our Lord, the one who made us and makes us whole. Every Christmas opens extraordinary doorways within, not only to the first Christmas long ago, but to all the others, especially the ones that we've lived. If some Christmases are lacking, and we might characterize this as one of them. There are others upon which to dwell, ones that can bring some quiet solace. If this Christmas is a hard one, perhaps there is one special Christmas past that you hold close on this day in prayer and thanksgiving. One such door that opened up for me within this year is the one to my 10th Christmas. Now by that time, my little sister and I, we knew Christmas. We were used to the patterns of the season. We'd decorate the house with mom, with garlands and lights. We'd set up the creche, nothing like ours here, uh, but still a delight. We'd make our list for Santa Claus. We'd sit on his lap at the mall even. We would know him well. We would diligently count down the days till Christmas with that advent calendar of ours, opening each illustrated panel, one a day, and there was a treat behind every door. We'd be a sheep or an angel for the pageant, and most of all, we'd agonize and we'd pine for Christmas morning and the gifts to come. But my 10th Christmas, that, that was one that would change everything. This was the Christmas that my mom was having twins. And so the run-up to Christmas was so much more than getting ready for the coming of Santa's gifts. We were getting ready for two gifts from God. Now my sister and I, we cherished this grainy picture from the sonogram which showed us the ghostly figures of these coming two new members of our family. And so we prepared and we waited. We watched mom grow and we moved two cribs into their room. And just before Christmas, mom brought them home. And the image this morning that came to me of, for this year, was that marvel. The marvel on that Christmas morning, being able to hold both of my uh, brother and sister, they were fraternal, you see, but in, in the crooks of my arm, these tiny baby persons, both asleep and, and, and both so light. It was as if the theme of the crash in our home and the wonder of celebrating a birth like Jesus's, like it was now being made real, that theme, that imagery in our own family, a double helping even. I don't remember what Santa gave us that Christmas, but I do remember what God gave us. And, you know, we're celebrating a baby this morning. They're adorable, yes. There's always this initial rush in endorphins at the sight of such beautiful creatures. But they are, let us never forget, at least for the family that gives them a home, quite demanding. They demand all of your attention and protection as the Holy Family had to protect their own child. And they make a mess multiple times a day that you have to clean up. 
And, and even as you try your best, they scream at you, or near you, I should say. And when a baby comes in the flesh, it's not just about a feeling, it is our lives, our history, that is forever altered, forever derailed, or should I say re-railed onto a new track, one of great struggle, but yes, of course, of great joy. And today we're celebrating a birth that brought great changes and great joy for not just one family, but for the entire world. It was a birth at first hidden and obscure that would leave no corner of this planet untouched by its glad tidings. Good news that would ultimately unleash a spirit that has been born again and again in generations upon generations of human hearts. This is the birth of Jesus in a cave born of his mother Mary. So much has been written, said, sung, and done as a result of this birth. One sermon can barely grasp it. It takes the church an entire year of services to reveal only a glimpse of the significance of this birth. It takes Christians entire lifetimes to grapple with what God has given them on this birthday. And what we found is that this birthday is where everything changes for the better. And if you let this child into your home, if you let him, let's say, be born in you, everything will change, and for the better. You've heard the phrase, uh, let's keep it real. Well, this is the day that God got real with us, joining us in our mess and making it holy with his presence. A presence that, even in the muck and the mire, never stopped showing forth the full-fledged love of God. And what this baby would do and say, it wouldn't be anything new necessarily. As John sings in our gospel, this word of God, this child of God has been with us since the beginning of time. It's like a curtain being moved aside to reveal the son. The birth of this baby would reveal something that had been there all along. Before that point, everyone had only talked about moving the curtain. And maybe they opened the curtain a little bit and then closed it again when it got too bright. But this baby is going to tear the curtain off the window, showing us what God is really like, showing us the captivating light of the truth of God that enlightens all that had come before and will inspire all that will come to be. It's not just about today. Today is good, even great, but it's also a doorway into so much more. My prayer is that you will stick with it and learn all about what this baby is going to do and what this baby is still doing in our world and what this baby brings to the table for all of us. I don't want to spoil it, but this baby will grow up and pull heaven down from the sky and start the steady work of bringing it to earth. But as John sings, the world is going to reject him. He came unto his own and his own received him not. People have such interests, you know, vested deep interests in keeping God up in heaven, out of their way, so they can do as they like, no matter what. And so they would ultimately throw Jesus back to heaven, back where he came from, but he will not stay there. So many people wanted to put the curtain back up so that the sun wouldn't shine so brightly on that comfortable darkness, so that they wouldn't have to wake up. They keep trying to nail the curtain back up, lying, cheating, even, even shedding the blood of their brothers and sisters to cover the light and to undo what that baby did. But the curtain, my brothers and sisters, is torn 
to ribbons. New territory has been revealed with wide open spaces. And just like these Americas, you can't undiscover the new world. It's done. John sings on, what came into being in this baby was true life. And the life was the light of all people. And the light that shines in that darkness is never overcome. God has become flesh and has lived among us, and we have seen this glory, not the glory of a king or a president or a dictator or, or the glory of a rich person, not the glory of a life protected from the storms of this world, protected from the plagues of this world, no. Those kinds of glories are illusions. When the light of God shines forth, we can see how ephemeral these glories are, like dust. Instead, in Christ, we have seen this baby, in this baby, the glory of God that comes as it does in a parent's love for their only child. In that, the whole world is there, delicate and precious. In that kind of love, and presence, there is something there that is worth giving away everything for, worth giving your life to. This is true glory. This baby, this holy child, this holy one is going to show us the kind of glorious things where if you empty your life into them, you are not spent or ruined, but more comes back to you a hundredfold, a thousandfold, full of grace and truth, love and mercy. Christmas is just the beginning. And I hope that the birth of this baby changes everything for you. That this baby throws you off your tracks, leading you into the new world, the real world. It wouldn't be so bad, you know but it would be so very different. It sounds beyond belief that one person can change the world, get it back on track. But trust me, keep tabs on this baby this coming year. Watch and learn. See what he will do as he grows to change the world forever. See how the world marvels and rejoices. See how the world tries to stamp out his light, but see how that light is not overcome by darkness. That light shines on. It shines in all his friends and beyond. In fact, the light of this child now suffuses all of creation, as it always has, and his light suffuses you as well. It always has. But for that d divine light to matter at all, it has to become matter. It has to be born. Born in Bethlehem, then born in the church. Imperfect, yes, but beautiful, all the same. And then born in your beating and battered heart, sparking a light that not only shines upon you, but shines from you revealing in the darkness of this world what you have always been, a beloved child of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.